Just thank you, and once again, um, there's you have 400 uh, paternal uh, orders made each year uh, through the English court system. Now, you, this is in relation to uh, Nat Natalia's um, statement. It says it says for half of those are through. Um, uh, UK surrogacy agreements, and the other half are through international agreements. And then, you, further on, then you say that 69% are international surrogacy. So, just want you to correct the actual figure on that. Is it is it 50% or is it 69%? And the international surrogacy arrangement, a parental order, it extinguishes the motherhood um, of the overseas surrogate and transfers the intent to the intended parents. So, the UK birth cert reflects the intending parent and the legal gar guardian. How do you believe that that is in the best interest, or indeed, of the child, or it's? How do you believe it's even ethical to erase the birth mother from the process? Um, so that's the first thing. Um, international. Are you familiar with the Spanish? There was a court case there in Spain uh, in April, uh, the tenth of April. There, it ruled that commercial surrogacy constitutes unacceptable exploitation of both child and biological mother. Um, the case involved a Spanish woman who made a contract with a surrogate in Mexico in 2015 to bear a child through a surrogacy agency. The court declared that, the adopt that adoption was the better option for protecting the best interests of the child. So what, in, what, what is your view in relation to adoption being a better uh, option uh, rather than a surrogacy? And, you know, is it, with regard to being international surrogacy being ethical, Basically, what we're saying is it's okay to give a green light to the USA or women in the USA or in the Ukraine um, and exploit the, the, the women there, but not here in Ireland. This is, is, is it's a double standard. I mean, no feminist woman uh, should, would be happy to, to stand over that at all. Um, to exploit women anywhere in, in our world um, for commercial reasons is wrong. So, I think you need to point to the just thrown it out. You're not giving examples. Like it's not thought out. Like I mean, if you're talking about exploitation, where, what? Well, uh, are you familiar with the the Ukraine system? Yeah. You are okay, and you know how how, how big that uh, industry is worth in the so, UK. And what's your point? So just just so to, it, we're we're well, running. You, uh, sorry, right, Sandra, let, we're, I'm, we're running I'm, short. So what I suggest sorry, is I'm, we I'm, actually I'm, we, I'm ask, I'm the, addressing we, the we ask the witnesses to, yeah, to, thank to you. give a comment on. It. Thank you. That's all right. I'll, I'll I'll rest there and let them comment on that. Okay, so can I take those in turn? First, in terms of the statistics, and apologies, I don't have my briefing paper in front of me, but I think the 69% figure was the numbers of um, parents who had reported choosing to go overseas because of the lack of professional um, availability of surrogacy matching in the UK. In terms of the statistics around parental orders, and this is approximate, but we, for the last few years, we've seen around 400 parental orders made each year, and about half of those are relate to UK surrogacy, and about half relate to international surrogacy. So I don't think the 69% came from that. So I, I hope that clarifies. Um, in terms of, you mentioned about erasing the birth mother. And I think one thing that's very important to say is that surrogates very strongly and very universally do not consider themselves mothers of these children. They consider themselves surrogates who are carrying a child for someone else. And that child belongs, if you, not that the child belongs to anyone, but that child is the child of the intended parents who she is helping. So the birth mother, so the, the birth mother is inconsequential? No, of course she's not inconsequential. She's absolutely integral to the process and it's really important to make sure that she's going into it with fully informed consent and that she is doing that, you know, but with all the right kind of but, setup. But the birth certificate doesn't actually reflect that. So in the UK, the current birth certificate records the surrogate as the mother initially. And then after the parental order is granted, the birth original birth certificate is sealed away and a new birth certificate is issued, which records the intended parents as the legal parents. Now, the, there is a proposal in with the Law Commission for to maintain a national surrogacy register, which would mean that going forwards, even if birth certificates are issued initially with the intended parents on, that there would be 
a record of who had carried the child and given birth so that that information is safeguarded for the child in the future. So this is not about erasing the person who has given birth. It's about reflecting their role as a surrogate, but not a mother in the conception of this child and retaining those records for the child for the future. And I think that is entirely appropriate and entirely ethical. And I think those who are concerned about that not being ethical have not spoken to surrogates. And I can tell you when we dealt with our response to the Law Commission proposal, we spent a considerable amount of time talking to real surrogates in the UK who were carrying children. And they were absolutely adamant that the people who were saying that they were mothers, that they you know, needed to be protected and safeguarded and have a right to change their mind, completely misunderstood what they were doing. So I think this kind of misguided feminism around protecting women who are actually well informed and making considered choices um, is something that you know needs to be treated with enormous care. Um, so that would be kind of my response to that. In terms of your question about whether adoption is a better option, parental orders were explicitly designed in the UK in 1990 when the legislation was going through to be an alternative to adoption um, because it was recognised that these are children who are being conceived through assisted reproduction. They are biologically connected with at least one of their parents. There is an intention for these people to be the parents from the moment of birth and they will care for the children from the moment of birth. They are not adopted children who are born into one family and then given up and placed in another family. And it's very important for children's identity to recognise that. You know, these are children that belong in the category of children who are conceived with donors through IVF, et cetera. Um, and yes, it is absolutely important for um, children in the long term for information to be kept about any donors involved, any surrogates involved, you know, their birth story that is core to their identity and they have a right to access that information. Um, but, you know, this belongs in the category of assisted reproduction, not in the category of adoption. Okay, thank you, okay. Thank you very much.